Who we got with us this morning? My name is uh, Miss Juicy. Tell us about yourself, Miss Juicy. Um, I've been getting high for almost eight years now. Um, I started getting high after I went through a divorce. And um, I went through depression. And um, that depression took me to a place that I never thought that I'd go. And for me, drugs was a lifeline. Or else I don't think I'd be here. Tell us about your background, uh, where you where you came up, how you grew up. Um, I was a child of teenage parents, of course. My grandparents played a big role in my life, but also my aunts, my uncles. Um, I was fortunate enough to grow up in a neighborhood that one street, all of us were sunk into each other, some kind of way. And every adult played a, a big part in helping raise us. Um, one made take us skating every week. Another one may uh, meet with us once a week for homework and to take us to the library. Um, I never knew that I stayed in the heart of prostitution. I grew up on Delmore uh, in Taylor, that area. And we think that we were going on a field trip to go see the ladies that's dressed up, you know, cause they, that was different back then. People took pride in everything they did, but, um, yeah, I grew up with uh, with loving parents. My mother was an addict. Uh, she has over 30 years clean. My dad was also an addict. Um, he retired from the city and succumbed to a, a alcoholism. Um, his, he died in 2016. Um, so I grew up with the family values. I grew up, you know, to get married first and then have kids. And I did that. I was 21 when I had my first child. And um, I was married by 23. And he and I had four lovely boys together. And we stayed married for over 17 years. Um, I had a perfect life. What schools did you go to growing up? Um, I, was, I went to the uh, DC program. That's when they started shipping us to the county schools for education. So I did go to a field school uh, that's on Olive and Dem, uh, Olive and Taylor. Um, I went to Lexington on Page, Alpha of Page. Um, what other city school did I go to? I came to uh, Normandy, Normandy uh, Junior High. Then I went to uh, all county schools from there. Did you graduate? Yes, I did. I graduated a year early, actually. Where did life take you after graduation? After graduation, I went um, I went to Job Corps in uh, Utah, and I majored in nursing. Um, so I I kicked it um, to be out of St. Louis and to see people from all over the world, uh, you know, uh, acquire dreams. It, you can meet with people and just do things that this little inner city would never never make you believe that you can do, you know. Um, after I left Utah, I came back home to be told that I was too young to use my nursing certificate. So I took that as it was time for me to go back to school. So I went back and got my CMT um, and started on my LPN. So by the time I was old enough, I was on my way to my RN. Um, yeah. So when did you graduate high school? Oh, that was like in 90. Oh, I don't know the exact year. Honey, these years blend together. But I had my first baby in 98. I was already, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, tell us about life after school with your RN. You had to, you got denied when you came back to St. Louis. Then what, then what did uh, life go? Okay, um, I, like I said, I had a hard time. They wouldn't really let me work. Um, how did I mean? Well, I, my mother ended up getting me my first job in nursing at, the, uh, at Delmar Gordon. So I don't know what she talked to them people about and what she said, but it was out there and they was prejudiced as I don't know what, off of 55 South and Butler Hill. And that was just a, a term. I, I didn't do well in uh, situations that I just wouldn't, 
saturated for, uh, you know, um, it was uh, real traumatic to me, though, the experience, the prejudice that I did, um, to experience some of the things that I experienced out there. And I quickly um, started working uh, for an agency cooking uh, temporary service. They took a liking to me and they put me in some very interesting uh, businesses. I worked at Monsanto on Olive in the executive's kitchen and I had no uh, experience in it. And these people loved me where I was running the kitchen. I'm the youngest mother, the youngest person in there, no experience, but my dad was a chef. So it was like, I don't care what, position, what they did, I always knew what to do and how to get things done. And uh, I, I ended up meeting my oldest son's father. He was this older guy that all the older women, are, they was crazy about his ass. They, uh, he had money, that he had drove a Cadillac, and you just knew he come from money. And I didn't, uh, why they like this man? But it was something about me that man was crazy about. And um, he and I ended up having a son together. But he was like the best thing that came into my life uh, in a long time. He made me remember that innocent little girl that I was in, my dream of being a nurse and having a family. Um, at the time, I was too young to appreciate what he was offering me. He's an engineer, actually. He was between jobs when I met him. He was just doing something to be doing something, working at Monsanto uh, in the kitchen, delivering food. But it was a good thing he was. Um, he gave me a reason to live with giving me that boy. You know, uh, he and I had never uh, went deep into a relationship because we just didn't. But because of our son, we had a friendship that we both needed. Um, that was his first son, really, and only. And um, Cameron actually made both of us live up to our expectations and quit bullshitting, you know. And um, he also was the reason I met my husband. You did. So Cameron was just a bundle of bringing life to his mother. And um, he prepared me for his brothers. I, the more kids I had, my mother said I made it look easy. But um, I just love my babies. You know, they love me. And Tell us the changes that uh, you've seen from a little girl to now in the city of St. Louis that you've witnessed firsthand. What's the differences? I want to be totally honest and say I lived a very sheltered life, so everything is different for me. I mean, everything. I, I never thought that, first off, that I'd be around anything that I'm around, that I'll be doing anything that I'm doing. So uh, everything has changed, starting off with our parenting, with our family values, and the way that we uh, love on each other, the way that we are not a community. We don't. We actually hate our own skin. If we are the same color, that's a reason for us to dislike each other, I see. Um, I see no love. I see no harmony. I see no, um, I'm my brother's keeper. And that's how I was raised. I had a hard time, very hard time uh, fitting in here because of the way I am. You know, people try to make me feel like I'm wrong for, they call me uh, Mr. Rogers, uh, my Mr. Rogers attitude. Well, I'd rather have that than some of the ones that I witness every day. Yeah. What uh, led to your depression and um, life taking a turn for you? Being, an, uh, being a, uh, uh, a child of an addict, being raised by an addict, and never getting what I truly needed as far as uh, help. We, as uh, survivors, we have to be the parent to our siblings. And we also have to be the parent to our parents. Well, by the time our parents get their shit together, 
they forgot who was their backbone to them getting their shit together. So I see a lot of women out here on the street that raise their brothers and sisters and not try to raise their own kids because it was used up raising our mama's kids. And instead of us being embraced and loved, out of sight, out of mind. We remind them of where they what they used to do. That's why they don't want us around. It ain't because of what we do. Because what we doing is the same thing that made us love them even more. So where the fuck is our love? What is some advice you would give to a young lady who's thinking about getting off into the street life? Get help. Don't be ashamed to say, I need help. But don't go to where you know it ain't. Put yourself in a place where it's help. If you gotta catch the bus and go to the emergency room, talk to somebody. Cause it's people out here, you are not alone. You have more help than you ever would dream that you'd have. Talk to a person on a bus stop, that stranger. God gonna put people in your life to be that light. <laughs> hey baby. Yeah, so. The worst thing we can do is not help ourselves like we was there to help everybody else. I have a nightmare knowing that I asked for help to the people that I was always there for, and this is where I'm at. What are some of the values and morals that you instilled in your children and to help them to lead better lives and make better decisions? Well, actually, just uh, the way that I was raised. Uh, I, that's something I just believe in in God, having faith. Uh, that's, what, that's the only thing that holds me together. The best thing I did for my kids was let them witness what God truly does in people's lives when, done, when it's done. And that's uh, that right there. Yeah. I pride myself on nothing else but that. If you could go back in time and talk to a young Miss Juicy knowing what you know today, what would you tell her? You got it, girl. You gonna be <laughs> This too shall pass. And if it's in my face, it was supposed to be. I meant where I'm supposed to be, doing what I'm supposed to be doing, because God got something to afterwards. Don't never give up. Do you have any social media? Do you have any cash app? Do you have no, any ways to be reached where no. people can reach out for Through resources? you. <laughs> um, Through you. And if there's anything in closing, Miss Juicy, we appreciate your time. If there's anything in closing that you want to say to anyone or anybody or anything that you haven't said in closing, now's your time you can say it. I would like to say hmm. Don't believe what the world has defined as your title. You're a child of God. God loves you. And in order to make it, you have to find that relationship with him. People look at me and, and, and say they'll think that I was at the lowest and I'll be the most unhappy. But this is the happiest I've ever been in my life because of the relationship that I've formed with Jesus. So, and that's what's working for me. Yeah. We thank you for taking time out with us. We appreciate you and we wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you.